Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to continue with pocket base. So what are we going to be doing in today's video? In this video, I'll show you how you can expand the relationship that you have with your records in addition to selecting which fields are returned. Now, if that sounds like a mouthful, don't worry. I'll show you exactly what I mean. And what it basically is, is if you know GraphQL, or maybe you've used something like um, Apache Solar um, full index search um, application, you there's a way for you to say, these are the fields I want to be returned in Solar. And for GraphQL, you can actually say, I want the data to return in this structure. Now, PocketBase is not going to allow you to change the structure of the data. However, it's still going to let you select which fields you want to return. So that way you don't return fields that you don't need to use. And actually that's going to be good for bandwidth. Without further ado, let's jump in. So here I am at my command line. I'm in the pocket base directory. What I did was I copied episode 07 to episode 08. You have seen me do that a number of times before, so I'm not going to show that. And now I'm going to start up my pocket base. With pocket base running, I'll go to my UI and just to show you that I have that I'm connected to there. Um, here's the URL. And the first thing I want to do is go to the admin section. I'm going to create a backup of our existing data before I change anything. Let's say I make a mistake or something. I'm going to do that. However, while I'm here, let's do this. Let's go to admins. Now, in collections, we have users. Those are the users who are going to be using our applications. But to manage pocket base itself, we have admins. And if you remember, once you're an admin, you can do anything on the system, which means you can access collections using the RESTful endpoint once you authenticate. And those rules don't apply that we have on our collection. So why don't we just create another admin? Now we could use the admin that we already have, but I'll create another admin and let's give it a different avatar. And I'm going to say it's called admin at example.com. And the password is very that secure, very that secure. And then I do create. So now we have our second admin. So we have two admins on our system. And currently you can see I've logged in with this admin, but I'm going to use this admin for today's, today's exercises. All right. Now that we have that, let's jump back here. And I'm going to be working with our carts collection. And you can see we have two shopping carts and they're essentially owned by these users. So let's now go to our editor. And so to help us move things along so you don't have to see me type, it takes a long time, here's what I've done. Now when I copied episode seven to episode eight, it came with this file, you know, the collection that I exported. So I'm gonna keep that there. I'm not gonna go over it. I covered that already, or you can import it and even how you export and get this collection. However, I created some subdirectory call example one through four. So let's go to example one. And in example one, I have our env file, right? That env file. Notice this env file is a little bit shorter than the previous one that we had in episode seven. That's because in episode seven, we had the ones for the items and so on. We're not working with that, so I trimmed it a bit. You'll also notice that for my URLs, I have two now instead of the one. Before I had one called base URL, and it was essentially this one that I'm now calling collections URL, because this is more accurate. This is the endpoint or the URL where our collections are, right? And now I have another one just called API URL. Now you'll notice that this is actually a subpart of this URL. Now that env files as they are today do not allow you to expand variables. It would be nice to be able to say expand the variable API URL in this place. And so all I have to do is type slash collections, but it doesn't do it. This is what it is. This is the limitation we have to live with. The other thing is now I have my admin email and admin password. Let's look at our um, HTTP file here. I call it list and search because that's sort of what we're doing. We're using listing and searching. But before I jump into that, let's make sure we're on the same page. We have a name request called login as admin. 
You've seen all this before. Notice, however, since I'm not logging in as a user, I'm not going to my user's collection. I'm going to the admin collection, and hence why I needed the API URL. Why? Because for admins, it the collections is not in slash API slash collection admins, but rather just slash API admins. How do I know that? Well, if we go back here and we go to our docs and we click on web API reference and you click here on API admins, you'll see authenticated password and it says you post into API slash admin slash authenticate with password. Whereas if you were using for records, for example, you say authenticate with um, thing, it would be slash APIs collection and the collection name. And in this case, it would be the user's collection. All right, so we've done that before. All right, so now you know why I'm using this to authenticate as an admin. So let's just verify that we can then send this request. We are authenticating as that admin. We have our token that is stored here. We've done this before. So I've stored my response, the body dollar sign to represent the body, this adjacent value, sorry. And then the token pulled up, restored. And then I can get a list of shopping carts. So if I send that with the authorization token, I get my list of shopping carts. And you can see here the two shopping carts. And once again, the users for these shopping carts are very different, but because I'm an admin, I can do it. I won't have to authenticate with that particular user. All right. So like I said, today I want to focus on filtering. Now, when we were talking about working with relations, we had something like this. We saw that we can, we saw we can append a relation and remove things. But here's this other part here, which is expanding relations. So to ex understand expanding relations, Imagine that I am querying the comments relation. So I'm saying, give me all comments, for example, or give me a specific comment. It could also be a specific or all, but let's just say I'm asking for a very specific comment. It would give me back the comment ID, the post, the user, blah, blah, their IDs, okay? But it will not give me the details for the users in this example or the details for that post. So when you say expand, you're saying, hey, if there's a field that has if there's a relationship, I'd like you to go fetch those values for that particular record and stick it in the response. So the way I don't have to do two requests. You see how nice that is? That's why I said it's like Solar or even more like GraphQL, because I can say while I'm querying this comments record, go fetch the other data for the related fields. So I don't have to get this, get the ID, then go fetch from post, then go get from user. I can get it all one time. And this is going to make sense when we take a look. And so if we click on expanding relations, you will see that it says here, you can also expand record relation fields directly in the returned response without making additional requests by using the expand query parameter. Now here to show you how you do it with JavaScript, but if you're using query parameter, it's just going to be question mat expand and then you're saying, hey, I want to expand user. And I want to expand post that tag. So this is in relation to the comments collection, right? When you make a request on comments, you're saying expand user. And then you can say expand the post that's part of this comment. Notice here, the post refers to another collection. So you can say expand that post and then grab the tags for that post. Here, we only expanded user. So in our response, we see we got an expand field and it says, oh, the subfield, the thing you're expanding is user. And then for this particular user, this is their information. All right, let's go take a look at how this works for us. If we go to API reference and we go to records and we go to view. So this is either list in a record or view in a record. It doesn't matter either one works and we scroll down here we can see it says api collection collection name records but if we scroll along we can see there um, there are a number of query parameters that can be passed 
number of pages, records of pages, how you want things to be sorted, and filtering, which we're not going to do in today's video. We'll do that in a future video. But here's our expand. Just as we saw earlier, you can just say expand, and you can say which fields you want to expand in that record or subfield. And it tells you that you can expand support up to six levels deep. And then the result will be in this expand field, given the field name that you've asked to expand with the data. All right, so let's go see what this looks like using our example. Here is our shopping cart, and we have this user as a field here. And we want to expand this because we don't want to make a second query to see who this user is. So if I go to example two, for example two, I simply say, expand the user field. That's all I say. That's the only thing that's different between this and this. If I compare these two things, compare selected, you'll see that besides the comment, the only thing that's different is that I have the expand user appended query parameter, okay? So nothing crazy. And so now if we authenticate again, authenticate again, then we send this request. Now you can see that our user field was expanded. So you see have for this item, we have all the fields for it. And this happened for every record. So here's that second record. We can see it expanded to say, so this is user 48333. And the next one, the previous one was for user um, John Doe. All right. So that's all nice and good. But this looks a little bit confusing, doesn't it? Um, and this is where, so now expand is pretty straightforward. So we've done that. But remember I said that this allows you like graph query to say which fields you want. So you can use the other query parameter called fields to say that I want to access or I want you to only return certain fields. Otherwise, it's returning all these fields for the expanded, for the record itself, right? Like we have the date created, updated, everything is being returned. And so um, what we can do is then go to our next example. And so for this field, I'm saying, oh, look, and what I like about the HTTP file is that notice how we have the query parameter on a different line and it's not a problem. So a question mark is used to introduce query parameters and then you can use ampersand between query parameters. So however, we have two query parameters. We have fields and expand. Our expand is just as before, but now we have added or included the fields query parameter. And I'm saying include the ID fields for the shopping cart include the discount for the shopping cart record, include the, oh, I have multiple ID multiple times. <laughs> I include the payment method, include um, the expand field. Oh, and I think there was a ordered um, field also. Let's just include that. And so now if I log in again and I send this request, now you'll see that I don't get like the create time, the collection name and all that extra information for the um, the the collection for the um, shopping cart. But notice since I say just include the expand, it include everything that's inside of expanded. This should give you a hint that you can actually say expand that user that whatever field you want within here. So why don't we do that? So let me just close this guy, close this up, close it up. And so our last example here does exactly that. It says we want these fields, the ID, the discount, you know, order, the payment method. And then for the expanded field within expand, we want user that ID, expand that user username, expand that user that email. And of course I want to expand. Now, if I didn't put this last query parameter, there wouldn't be anything here. And so hopefully that makes sense. So it, I mean, it looks pretty complicated, but really you just can build this up very slowly. And so if I, once again, send my request to log in, and then I send this request, you can see how we have returned just the set of fields we really need for us to do processing. Um, I think my ordered field did not get returned. I wonder why. Um, let's do this, go back here. Let me do send request. So we have, 
discount ordered huh. why ordered uppercase huh. okay so i guess it's case sensitive and so ordered with is all uppercase i actually i want to change that in my collection so let me come back here i just changed the my collection so that order is now a lowercase and when i resend this so let's go send this again you can see order and so yeah let me close this guy and close this and now this is number four send the request here and we can see username we have discount expanded field username email id username those are the things we want for the expanded subfield and then id of this particular shopping cart whether it's order or not and the payment method for this um, shopping cart so there you go we've done two things today we look at how you can expand a field that's a relationship within a collection and we look at how you can restrict or um, control the number of fields that are returned so you don't return unnecessary information remember if you're building an application whether it's a web or mobile app but if you're fetching information over the network just try to minimize how much information you have to fetch all right with that said i think this is enough for now if you reach this part without being a subscriber i hope you consider subscribing i would love to have you as a subscriber to my returning subscriber thank you for sticking with me and appreciate it and Mikhail, thank you for being a Patreon subscriber. If you'd like to join Mikhail as a Patreon subscriber, here's some information on how you do that. Um, take care, stay safe. See you in the next video. Bye.